Well, good evening, everyone. Welcome to day one of 40 Days to Easter. So I'm Reverend Jeff Jones. I'm the pastor of World Victory Church and Life Center in Newport News. We're excited today. I won't be before you long, but here's what we're doing. So the members of the church have a booklet called One uh, NIV Once a Day, 40 Days to Easter. You can get this through Amazon or in bookstores. You can order them from Christian books. You can even get it on your Amazon Kindle so you can download it and and start uh, reading it. But it is, a, it is a daily devotional, and it includes scriptures for the day, meditation, and then a prayer. And this is all about the 40 days leading up to Easter. So let me tell you about World Victory Church and Life Center before we get into the lesson what we're and what we're going to do. At World Victory Church and Life Center, our purpose is to help people meet God through the Lord Jesus Christ, who will meet their needs at every age and stage of life. We believe that People need more than just a sermon. We have to meet needs, right? And we believe that a great commitment to the Great Commission and the Great Commandment will build a great church and a great Christian. And so we are on this journey to really build up the body of Christ. And so part of what we're doing, this is in the area of discipleship, making sure that we learn different ways to approach the text, different ways to learn things, to meditate on God. And so what's going on right now is many people are fasting, right? Whatever they're, whatever they're trying to uh, stop doing or refrain from doing, they have picked that. Uh, we understand that biblical fasting is about food, but we also know that fasting is how you deprive yourself of certain things so you can be closer to God. We're not getting hung up on definitions. We're getting hung up on if we deprive ourselves of some things and then lean on God and read his word and meditate and pray, we can get closer to God. So that's what we're doing. So we're on day one, right? There are 40 days for Easter. There's 46 calendar days, but you don't count Sundays in the 40 days. A couple of things uh, just to kind of lay out for you that discipleship or 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 gaining the character of Christ or becoming more Christ-like is one of the goals and aims of the church. In fact, Jesus said in John 17, 8, I gave them the words you gave me. So he was teaching his disciples so that they could teach others. All right, so let's move on. So we're at day one. And what I'm going to do, I'll tell you what the scriptures are that are in the books until you get it. But the scriptures for day one are Matthew 27, 50 through 51, then Hebrews 10, 19 through 22. That's Matthew 27, 50 through 51, Hebrews 10, 19 through 22. Now you'll be able to read the, the text yourself. So what I'm going to do is give you an expanded version of where that text comes from. So we're going to use Matthew 27, 50 through 51. That is part of a larger body of scripture called the death of Jesus which actually runs from Matthew 27, Matthew 27, 45 through 56. You can pause this at any time to take notes. Let's get in. Let's dig it. All right. From the New Living Translation, this is how it reads. At noon, darkness fell across the whole land until three o'clock. At about three o'clock, Jesus called out with a loud voice, Eli, Eli, let us about to me, which means, my God, my God, why have you abandoned me? Well, some of the bystanders misunderstood and thought he was calling for the prophet Elijah. One of them ran and filled a sponge with sour wine, holding it up to him on a reed stick so he could drink. But the rest said, wait, let's see whether Elijah comes to save him. Then Jesus shouted out again, and he released his spirit. At that moment, the curtain in the sanctuary of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom. The earth shook. Rocks split apart and tombs opened. The bodies of many godly men and women who had died were, were raised from the dead. They left the cemetery after Jesus' resurrection, went into the holy city of Jerusalem, and appeared to many people. The Roman officer and the other soldiers at the crucifixion were terrified by the earthquake and all that had happened. They said, this man, truly was the son of God. And many women who had come from Galilee with Jesus to care for him were watching from a distance. Among them were Mary Magdalene, 
Mary, the mother of James and Joseph, and the mother of James and John, the sons of Zebedee. So that's the entire text. So I'm going to ask some questions. You can make some notes. You'll answer these questions for yourselves, and you can ponder them over time. First question. First question. When in your life did you ever feel abandoned? Because we have to think, although Jesus was Jesus, that he felt abandoned at this time, right? Even though he was God in the flesh or the son of God, there was a human moment where he felt abandoned. How and when in your life have you felt abandoned? You can pause and write that down. After that, if you look at verse 46, what did Jesus' last words mean in verse 46? Was he questioning God? Was, was he questioning God? Or was he quoting a line of scripture from Psalms? What was he doing? Well, this was a deep expression of anguish. He, let, he felt when he took on the sins of the world. It was anguish. Have you ever felt in anguish? And you may have said some things out of this anguish that you know, you thought maybe there's no help coming. So this was out of anguish, right? Some of the bystanders misunderstood him. Ever been misunderstood? Ever cried out for help? Been misunderstood? We all have at some point in time. In verse 48, well, let me, let me skip to verse 40, uh, uh, 48. What did one man in particular try to do for Jesus? There was a man in verse 48 Right? One of them ran and filled a sponge with sour wine, holding it up to him on a weed stick so he could drink. Well, at least he tried to help. At least he tried to help. The rest of the folks just stood around basically taunting Jesus, right? Taunting him to see what else would happen if someone was coming to save him, maybe Elijah, right? Have you ever been the one who tried to help someone and it seems like no one else was around but you, but you had to help? Right. So as we progress, as you get near the end of just diving into the text, there's a Roman centurion. After all Jesus had been through, after all Jesus had tried to tell people about who he was, some believed and some didn't. But in verse 54, the Roman centurion said, they said, this man truly was the son of God. And that was after the earthquake. Truly, so they recognized that Jesus was who he said he was. And so in this season, excuse me, as part of this text, what you see is redemption. You see the part where it says that the veil of the temple was torn in half. I want you to think, this is not just some curtain. Think about the heaviest curtain you've ever seen. Maybe like in a, a, a movie theater or a stage where there's a stage acting going on. Imagine a curtain so big that you can tie horses to it. Horses can go in the opposite direction and still not tear this carpet, this, this, uh, this curtain. And then all of a sudden, at the moment Jesus gave it up, that temple veil was torn in half. Well, that veil back then was used to separate what's called the holies of holies. You could not go beyond that veil or beyond that curtain and still live. And that was what kept people from God. But when Jesus died, the whole curtain was torn. And you and I now have access. So no matter what we do, no matter what we go through, no matter what sins we have, right? No matter what we experience, we have access to God. You have access. You don't need in, in someone to intercede for you or pray for you, although that's good. Like, I know some prayer warriors, right, that if I need a prayer, I'll call that person because I just feel like the way they pray, I know God hears me, but I really think they heard them. Anybody know what I'm talking about? All right, good. So it, it, it speaks of redemption, redemption. It's this miracle. Because think about this. This is a miracle. When you go back to verse 46, I believe it is, yeah, no, 51 through 53. Watch, watch this, watch this. And 51 through 53, read this. Uh, this time I'll go from the New International Version. At the And when Jesus had cried out again in a loud voice, he gave up the spirit. 
At that moment, the curtain of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom. You got that? The earth shook and the rocks split. The earth shook. This is an earthquake and rocks are splitting. This is something these folks had never seen, not as a result of an event, right? And, and the tombs broke open. I, mean, I think about that Thriller video with Michael Jackson, you know, the Thriller video. The tombs broke open and the bodies of many holy people who had died were raised to life. These are miracles. These things didn't just happen. So this miracle was a miracle brought on, caused by, and to deliver redemption. That's the key word for this evening, redemption, to be redeemed, right? This miracle was redemptive in nature. Right? When that veil was separated, we were no longer separated from God. So as you go back through this day one, right, as we're going to summarize, you go back through day one, day one really emphasized, and when Jesus had cried out in a loud voice, he gave up his spirit. At that moment, the curtain of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom. We just covered the larger piece. My question for you, though, is so what? So what? We read it, we heard some details, so what? What will it cause you to do in your life? That's always the question. What will it cause you to do? So my question for you is what steps can you take this week? This week as you are fasting and as you're going through the 40 days, what steps can you take this week to really let this passage sink in, right? to really let it sink in and absorb. In the future, whom can you share this good news with? Because that's why we get this. That's why we're getting this information. If we can share it, because I'll tell you, my friends, there are literally millions of people out here who need the word of God, who need God in their life, who need Jesus in their life. In fact, around World Victory Church and Life Center, 5900 Jefferson Avenue, we have identified that there are 164,000 people who live within five miles of world victory. So as we close out, we have to let you know we're on a mission. And so if you're looking for a place where you can worship God in spirit and in truth and find a real purpose for living or get significance in your life based on what God wants, we're the place for you. So we'll be back tomorrow with day two. Day two, so you'll know, uh, the scriptures are Genesis 6, 11 through 18. 6, 11, Genesis 6, 11 through 13, then 17 through 18 and 22. That's day two. So let us pray. God, we thank you for this effort. We thank you for this campaign. We thank you for 40 days to, East, to Easter. We thank you, God, that you allowed us to come together wherever we are in our several homes and places to worship you in spirit and in truth, to read your word through this devotional, to hear your word through this, this uh, recording. I ask God that you would continue to lift up your people, encourage them, empower them beyond measure. We love you. We magnify you. We lift up your name. In Jesus' name we pray. And they all said amen. Amen and amen. We'll see you tomorrow at day two. Amen.